This video is sponsored by Film Convert. Hey guys, Flo from Off to Lens here. I'm a French Australian filmmaker based in French Alps, and today we're talking gear. I often get asked about the gear I use when traveling, and since I recently came back from Iceland, I thought it would be a good time to make a video about my current travel kit. So I will go over the kit that I use for travel content, and why I chose the specific items. All links will be in the description as well. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one, and let's jump into it. Over the past 8 years or so, my travel kit has changed many times. I started making proper travel videos back in 2014 with the original BMPCC, which I kept as my main travel camera until I changed to the BMPCC 4K in 2018. During that time, I also used the Canon 6D, the 5D Mark III, and more recently, the BMPCC 6K and the Pro. Since this is a travel kit, the idea behind it is to keep things as compact and light as possible. After spending a few months with this kit in the French Alps on short trips, and more recently on a pretty full-on week in Iceland, I think the kit that I'm using now works perfectly for me. The camera. As with a regular 6K, there are a lot of reasons why I decided to use a 6K Pro as my main travel camera. First of all, the image is beautiful, the dynamic range is impressive, the codec and resolution options are amazing, and since the price isn't that high for what it offers, I don't feel too stressed when traveling around like I would with a $10,000 camera. It is also very easy to use, and things like changing frame rates and resolution on the go is super quick and simple. Whilst I love using the Pocket 4K and the regular 6K, the 6K Pro has some additional and amazing features when compared to the other two. Even though they are more geared towards documentary or commercial applications, they help a lot for travel content as well. First, the internal NDs, which get rid of the need for regular or variable NDs that can be annoying to swap or carry when traveling. I do always have a basic 0.9 tiff and ND just in case. Then the super bright 5 inch tiltable screen makes for a great shooting experience. Whilst I love using monitors, when traveling I actually hate it. Even with the Pocket 4K I never used a monitor on any of my trips. The screen on the Pro was so handy in Iceland when I was trying to get low angle shots or when mounted on a tripod. And finally, the NPF batteries. They last about an hour, and when I was in Iceland, I actually shot each location without ever changing batteries on the go. I carry four with me, and they last all day. Even though I also have the grip and the viewfinder, I prefer to use them for actual proper shoots and not for travel. Lenses. Even though I own cinema lenses and vintage Contax Zeiss lenses or even Sigma lenses, I always prefer my Canon zooms for travel content. There are two main reasons for that. First, they are weather sealed, which means that they will be okay in any environment that I find myself in. In Iceland, I got drenched many times for example. And they have IS. This is super handy, especially on the 6K Pro that doesn't have any sort of internal stabilization. When traveling, I don't always use a tripod. On top of that, they are light, which is quite important on a trip if you need to carry your gear for long periods of time. Also the fact that they are zoom lenses means that they are versatile and cover a wide variety of subjects. Sometimes I spend a whole day with just one lens. My go-to lenses are the 16-35, 70-200 and 24-105, all f4 and is. Of course it depends on the destination, but most of the time I use the 16-35 especially in the Alps or in cities, but for Iceland I shot most of it on the 70-200 and 24-105. Since I also take photos using an EOS R, I can easily swap lenses between the two bodies, which is another huge plus. Small rig cage and handle. I always use cages on my cameras, even on my EOS R. On documentary and commercial shoots, it is mainly to add accessories such as monitors or arms, but during travels, it helps protect the camera. I often put the pocket on the ground, even if it is rocky or muddy. It also allows me to attach the top handle. Whilst I find myself using it less on the Pro due to the screen, I still like to have the handle, as it can help with super low angle shots, or just to carry the camera for long periods of time. Peak Design Strap This item, and more specifically the little red anchors, is one that I get asked about all the time. The strap that I use is a Peak Design Slide. I actually carry and use my 6K Pro almost as a DSLR or mirrorless camera. Even if the camera is quite bulky and a bit heavy, it doesn't get in the way when carried that way. I have three of them, of different sizes, and the reason I keep using them is because you can actually detach and swap them in a matter of seconds thanks to the anchors. A feature that is hard not to have after you start using it for a while. It makes it very easy when packing or taking the camera in and out of the bag, plus they're super comfy. Media. I have been using the YC Fast card since I got my first BMPCC 4K back in 2018. I much prefer to shoot with internal media, especially when traveling since it means no cables or extra mounting accessories. I carry two 500GB ones and one 1TB. One Mics. 
I actually almost never use mics when traveling, but I always bring one just in case I need to capture a specific audio bit. I prefer to rely on sound design for my travel contents, as you can see in my recent Elements of Iceland video. The mic that I always carry with me is the Rode NTG video mic, which is the one that I'm also using right now for the voiceover. It is small, light, and has a very useful gain control knob at the back. Now a quick word about today's sponsor, Film Convert. My Iceland video and all the footage you see today is graded using Film Convert. I use it with all my cameras, from Blackmagic to Canon and even drones, and I have been doing so since 2013. Film Convert enables you to add film color and grain to your videos. I use it as a plugin for Final Cut Pro, but you can also use it for Premiere, After Effects, or DaVinci. You have real film grain, nearly 20 film stocks to choose from, and you can export your own lots from it too. There's also a newer version called Nitrate, which adds Cineon log film emulations, full custom curve control, and advanced film grain. I have already made a dedicated video about it, so feel free to check it out. And don't forget to check out the link in the description to get 10% off. The rest. I wanted to focus on the camera side of my kit, but of course there is a lot more that make up my full travel kit, so here are a few very important items. The Aperture MC is a tiny and versatile light that is always in my bag. You never know when you might need it. On a documentary shoot, it is an actual light as part of my lighting kit, but when traveling, I use it when it gets dark to look into my bag or the car, and I've also used it to change lenses at night. Peak Design Capture Clip Another super useful item from Peak Design. The capture clip for me is a way to carry my stills camera hands-free, which allows me to concentrate more on video, but I can still get a few photos if needed. When I travel by myself, I also find it very easy to swap lenses between the two bodies, having the R constantly attached to myself, so I don't have to hold it or open my back to grab a new lens. I cannot see myself going on a trip without it. B cam. Even though the 6K Pro is my main camera, I never travel with one camera only. The reason that I decided to get an EOS R in the first place was because not only it takes amazing stills, but it also takes beautiful videos. I've mentioned it before, but it works very well for me as a B cam during documentary shoots and travel. The fact that it is weather sealed means I can capture content when the 6K Pro can't if the weather gets too intense. I would have not been able to capture the lava shots in Iceland without the R since I was completely soaked. Drone. Depending on the location, I also bring my drone, which is the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. I love it, and it's pretty much perfect for most situations. I also find it relatively easy to match footage with the pocket. The bag. And to carry all of that, I use the Wanded 41 liter. As you know, I'm a big fan of Wanded and have been for a few years now. The bag that I use the most is a Provoke 31 liter, but now that I have the 6K Pro, I prefer to use a newer 41 liter. It is super comfy, sturdy, and has heaps of space. Feel free to watch my Wanded reviews for more specific info. I'm very happy with my 6K Pro travel kit as I found it to be simple and straightforward which makes it super easy to carry and shoot. When I'm traveling, I like to experience a place and capture what I see the way I see it and prefer not to be too distracted by gear or having to set up shots. Using a cinema camera as powerful as a 6K Pro almost as a mirrorless stills camera has been a very refreshing and a hassle-free experience. I am able to just grab the camera and the lens attached and just go. No need to attach the monitor or to make sure that I have an ND filter with me. What I would love though is for Blackmagic to release a 4K Pro, as I prefer the format of the 4K for travel content, and it is slightly lighter and smaller. I hope you have found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe and let me know what is your go-to travel kit these days. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.